couple of days ago, I was met with a barrage of profanities, insults, some quite witty, and others putting words in my mouth. Of course, the story I'm talking about is the idea that, well, I'm not really interested in driving a Nissan Patrol because of the other people that drive them. The story here is not actually about whether I should or I shouldn't drive a Nissan Patrol. It's actually about the disruptive, rude, crass behaviour of four-wheel drivers, many four-wheel drivers, in all countries, in all shapes and creeds, driving all kinds of vehicles from all manufacturers, who are disrespectful to the people around them, the other four-wheel drivers on the tracks on which they're driving, and planet Earth itself. So to start, I want to take out of the equation some of the elements that were put in by viewers who said things that I said that I, I plainly didn't say. For example, that all Bogans drive innocent patrols. That is obviously not true, and I didn't say it. And uh, looking at the comments in different countries, the, these, and I'm going to call them collectively Bogans, every country has them, drive all kinds of vehicles. But in Australia, there is a strong association with those people and the Nissan Patrol. And that for me was enough, or is enough, for me to say, I'm not sure I want to be tarred with that brush. If you feel that is a weak reason not to drive what is a very good four-wheel drive, and if you think that is weak, then fair enough. For you, that's weak. For me, it is sufficient. In South Africa, uh, I, I drove my first uh, four drive when I was when I was uh, 22. My, my my first oh, my own one, and um, I joined a clique of Land Rover owners. And I liked the people. We got on well. We thought the same thing. And at the time, I was comfortable in that environment. Many years later, as my career developed, I looked with envious eyes on the idea of buying a Toyota Land Cruiser pickup and converting it into a double cab. At the time, the double cab didn't exist. Toyota didn't make it in any country. And I was concerned that now the new group of people with which I would be associating myself well, in South Africa, to put it bluntly, the Bogans loved the two-door pickup Land Cruisers. And generally, Land Rover owners would look down on Land Cruiser owners, not because of what they were driving, but because of what the people were perceived to be. The idea that I said, and this was shared a lot, that all Nissan patrol drivers were Bogans is ridiculous. I didn't say it. I didn't, didn't infer it. I have friends with Nissan patrols. I posted a video to my Patreons, just to my Patreons. It was not made public. I use my Patreons as a bit of a, uh, a dipstick to to uh, get, a, get a gist of a reaction to a video, particularly videos like this that are, are commentary about the state of four-wheel driving. And uh, I find it very useful because I get a lot of insight. And, 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 and I concluded that video by saying, imagine this, and I want you to do the same. And some of, one of the, the, the patrons came up with a response to it that I thought was very apt. I proposed that you were sitting in a campsite, beautiful campsite, waves breaking in the distance, birds in the trees, not too many people around, and you've set up camp and you're looking forward to 
uh, starting a fire, putting something on the fire and having a cold beer with your mates. And some vehicles arrive and you glance and you see that there's a Subaru and an Amarok and, uh, and a, doesn't matter what it is, a Ford Explorer arrive and you don't give them a second glance. Picture the same situation, but a Nissan Patrol arrives. And what do you do? You look much more fervently now concerned that these people are going to be Logans and ruin the camp for the night or even the weekend. The reaction from the Patreon that I mentioned earlier was that it's actually got very, very little to do with the vehicle that arrives. It's got to do with what the vehicle looks like. If it is a no-name brand four-wheel drive with 37-inch wheels, and uh, well, I don't need to I don't need to explain or describe in detail what a, such a vehicle might look like. And it arrives and you can see that the vehicle's primary purpose is to make a lot of noise and spin a lot of wheels. Nissan Patrol or not, you're going to think, oh, is our weekend about to be ruined? <clears throat> His point was that it was less about the Nissan and much more about the way it looked. And I think he was absolutely correct. While, if Nissan patrols did arrive, and I'm talking about Australia, in your country, you will have different vehicles, different, you will have a different look on this issue. In Australia, it is true that if they are Nissan patrols, you might take a second look. But then if they were touring vehicles with maybe with a roof rack pulling a little little trailer, you know, and you would probably be quite comfortable thinking, well, they're not of the Bogan fraternity. And you would relax. During my career, I have been called a number of things. Um, Almost every profanity you can think of has been hurled my way, but this week I was called something that, well, I need to, I need to share this with you. Um, it, it was on Facebook, and uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm commonly referred to, I did not invent this, it had nothing to do with me, I'm commonly referred to in the four-wheel drive sphere, world, space, around the world, as the David Attenborough of four-wheel drive. I have no idea whether it's my accent, my hair that blows in the wind, or what. I don't know. I can't imagine. However, this comment attacked that. And I have to say to you that it is probably the wittiest, cleverest comment ever to have been thrown my way. The comment was, ASPW, the David Attenborough of wish. If you are out there watching this video and you were the one that came up with that, I want to congratulate you. M bring them on. The funnier, the wittier, the better. And that is the wittiest one so far. As I said earlier, the story is about behavior. The, the problem in Australia is no different to the problem anywhere else. And I have, uh, I'm very familiar with the South African 4x4 community and the problems are identical. People that, um, as I said earlier, give no thought to how they behave over what they drive. Their sole focus is to show off. And that's a thing for younger people. I get it. I was there. I was there, however, I was never, and all my mates that did four-wheel driving, we were young, we were in our 20s. We, when we drove off-road and had fun, we did it on a designated place, a playground, an obstacle course, a place where we would not damage the environment, and a place designated for that kind of thing. The idea of tearing up a beach 
was absolutely appalling to me. And those in South Africa, you will know Sodwana. My first visit to Sodwana, I parked at the beach entrance and walked onto the beach and what confronted me horrified me. A drunken fool in a Hilux driving through a pool of water with these enormous wheels not five feet from a four-year-old with a bucket and spade. And here were people trying to enjoy the beach with their boots and buckets and spades next to people trying to enjoy the beach with uh, sawn off exhaust pipes and enormous wheels. These two things do not mix. And as a result of this kind of behavior, the laws in South Africa changed. There was one day an announcement from the Minister of Environmental Affairs Beach driving in South Africa will be banned forthwith. There are a few extras that where you can launch a boat, but generally speaking, beaches are closed to wheeled traffic. And if you drive on them, your vehicle can be confiscated. The rules are very, very strict. The reason why that has happened is because of the behavior of these people. It takes very few of them to mess it up for everybody. It's the same with the hunting industry, it's the same with the fishing community, it's the same with so many communities where a very small number ruin it for a very large number. I don't have a solution to it, but this is the reality. And what's happening in Australia now, we know I am now becoming more and more familiar. I'm by no means an expert in the Australian four-wheel drive community. But Australia is moving slowly towards where South Africa is now. That if you want to go off-roading, you will go to a dedicated track obstacle course where this kind of driving is, well, not just encouraged, but taught and there are little competition events, and it's great fun, but forget about driving on beaches. And that is on its way to Australia right now, where Australians will not be able to do one of the things that they have done with um, freedom for decades, forever, for as long as one can think back and remember driving on wild beaches and wild tracks in the middle of nowhere in your four-wheel drive, finding a lonely spot, camping there. It's the magic of four-wheel driving. It's the magic of touring. And it is what sets, and in, my, in my opinion, it is what sets Australia apart from almost every other country on earth, that we can drive onto beaches this is not going to last for very long because beaches are starting to be closed. Tracks are starting to be closed. Because as I said, that very, very small number, and you know who you are, you are ruining it for yourself. Don't you think that you're ruining it for other people? At the moment, you might be young and energetic and full of the stuff that flows through our bodies when we're very young, and we want to drive 37 inch wheels uh, and make a lot of noise by cutting off our exhaust so our diesels really make a, a lot of noise. <clears throat> You're ruining it for yourself because when you get to middle age, you will have, like me and my mates, calm down a bit. It's got far less to do with showing your mates how badly you can drive up a really steep slope when all you most of you really understand is lock the dips and put the right foot to the and squeeze the carpet with your right foot and everybody cheers. There's not that much skill involved. I've watched it. Occasionally I'll see a driver and I'll think, yeah, 
He knows what he's doing. And you know the difference between the two, generally speaking? The guys that know what how, the, how to drive, you hardly hear the engine. Hardly hear it. And the guys that don't know how to drive and have absolutely no clue, lock, foot flat, and they also make it up the slope. When you get to that point where you've done that for a while and it becomes less and less appealing, you will, A, become a better driver, hopefully, and secondly, you will want to drive onto those beaches with your mates to have a nice lonely time with the stars and the sea and a couple of beers and a couple of mates. And you won't be able to do it because what you did when you were younger ruined it for yourself and of course ruined it for everybody else as well. To conclude though, I want to talk more about this in patrol. Uh, I was accused in the, in the video of being a typical Toyota fanboy. Uh, Nissan fanboys, did you not hear what I said in the video about what I felt about the Nissan Patrol? It's a strange thing with, uh, with, with a video like that is that um, people will hear what they want to hear, disregard the rest, and then add what they think I might have said. And the particular case is that I, I, I spoke about um, the, the Nissan Patrol GU, if it, if it was sold in this country, it would be compared to alongside the 76 Land Cruiser. And I said it would be, it would be by far a better vehicle. It's bigger, it's got a much better ride. It, it has so much going for it. Whereas the Land Cruiser 76 is actually quite a small vehicle, not particularly big at all. And, um, so it would compete very favorably with that. But if I look at the, the Patrol GU, if it was still, still sold in this country, its competitors would be, yes, the Land Cruiser 76, but also Jeep Wrangler. The Jeep Patrol is far better than the Jeep Wrangler in almost every respect. In quality of build, its strength, payload, all right? Engines is an arguable uh, element because the GU was made in with some uh, with some engines that were actually quite weak, but also with some engines that were very strong. Uh, and I think also about the Ineos Grenadier, which is on its way to the shores here in Australia and in fact around the world. And I think to myself, okay, what did the guys at Ineos actually try and do? As, as far as I'm concerned, they have built a Euro GU patrol. <clears throat> it's European made, we know that. It's a European design. It looks like an old Land Rover Defender. Um, it is uh, European in its styling inside, the seats and things, very appealing. But in terms of what it is, solid axle, coil spring, station wagon, door at the back, it's a a vehicle that will compete directly with vehicles like the GU Patrol. The trouble is, the GU Patrol is unfortunately not sold in Australia. It's sold in the parts of the Middle East and a few other countries around the world. And I think that's very, very sad because right now, if I look at the vehicles in this space, <clears throat> which solid axle, coil springs, station wagon, uh, what's left? There's the Jeep, Ineos Grenadier, Galindo Wagen 464 series, which is their new basic series. I'm trying to get information so I can do a review on it. And Nissan Patrol GU, but we can't get them. I think it's a great, it's, it's, a, it's a great pity. Nissan has left, let us and let the community down by not selling the GU in Australia. And how difficult can it be, having been sold here in the past, to bring it in as a special order? <clears throat> I think it would actually be a very popular vehicle and do extremely well. And think about how much it would cost. The Land Cruiser 300 is well past $100,000. The Patrol Y61, the base model, is well under $100,000. Ineos Grenadier will probably be priced similar, maybe a little bit more than the Y62 Patrol. 
and the GU patrol could easily be brought into the country for the same or similar price as a 76 Land Cruiser, which is cheaper than all of these, but not by much, really not by a couple of thousand dollars cheaper. And think about the equipment levels in a GU patrol when compared to a 76 Land Cruiser. They're not even on the same page. The Land Cruiser's, Cruiser's equipment and accessories that come standard are, to put it bluntly, poor. The Land Cruiser 70 Series is not particularly good value for money. We know, though, and I like the 70 Series a lot, we're buying good, good solid engineering, which is not found in a lot of vehicles these days, but it is found in the GU Patrol, and it is found in the Ineos Grenadier. So our choices in Australia if you think about it, Nissan, how difficult would it be to bring it in as a special order? You don't need to hold stock. They're made in the factory, not very far away. Special order. I, I think you would do exceptionally well with that vehicle. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you so much for watching. 4X Overland is truly independent of sponsors and that means that our opinions, reviews and commentary cannot be influenced by commercial interests. Help us stay independent by joining our Patreon family now. Details in the video description.